We listened and saw that Jesus had power over all that we feared, hunger, sickness, demons, and death. After six months, the foundational teaching climaxed. We taught the arrest, trial, and crucifixion of Christ. In the teaching, I stressed the humiliation of Christ, the plucking of the beard, the beating. When they arrested Jesus, when they hurt him, I could hardly believe it. Che! I just wanted to get up and hit those soldiers. All these things were loathsome to the Taliabo. Everyone was bewildered and sobered as they struggled to understand why Jesus had to die. Some refused to talk, claiming their hope had died. We erected a large wooden cross in the center of the village and hung a crown of thorns on it. After teaching the crucifixion, we did not meet with the people that night. Rather, we encouraged them to spend the evening thinking about the words they had heard. I could think of nothing else. Our hope was dead, hanging there on that piece of wood. We could not talk with each other. I was one of the last to leave the teaching house. When I left, Mama Nama was just sitting there. When I came back in the morning, he was already there. He looked like he'd been there all night. The following morning, Stephen taught the resurrection of Christ. Man deserved to die for his sin, but God provided a way to escape judgment. He provided a covering for Adam and Eve, an ark for Noah, and a ram in place of Isaac. Blood was applied to the doorpost to escape death in Egypt. Like the Passover lamb, the sinless Jesus was perfect. As the lamb died in place of the firstborn, so Jesus died in our place, paying our sin debt. As the words of the angel were spoken, he is not here, he has risen. At this point, Mama Nama came alive. Well, if that's so, thank you, God. My hope is alive. Then I recounted my own journey to faith in Christ. I used black pieces of paper to illustrate my sin. I was born in sin. As a young boy, I lied. I would steal. I made my mother cry. My father became so frustrated, he told me to change my ways or get out of the house. I left. I went my own way so that I could continue to sin. I explained that there were some sins that no one but my own wife knew about, others that were secret. Even my wife knew nothing of these, and some even I didn't know about. Only God knew. I said to them, do you see the trouble I'm in? God is holy. He is without sin. I've broken God's law, and there's a wall of sin separating us that I can't break down. I'm under the judgment of God. My hands are empty. But God sent a deliverer to rescue me out of my trouble. Jesus Christ, God in human flesh, took my punishment for me. He died in my place that I may live. God has nailed my sins to the tree. I'm free. Look, I'm clean. No one said a word for the longest time. You taught and taught, and I thought and thought. I was confused and I said, if this promised one is dead, who is there left to save us? Then I heard that death could not hold him. I cried, Jesus is alive to rescue us. Thank you, thank you God. Jesus has paid my sin debt. It was a day I'll never forget. One by one, the Taliabu professing faith in Christ. We laughed, we cried, no one thought of eating. We rejoiced in the great things that God had done. By the end of the day, over a hundred Taliabu had come to Christ. This one day made all the years of labor worth it. They were a prepared people, just as Stephen had prayed. 
Their faith proved to be genuine. Over time, we've watched their love for the Lord and hunger for His Word grow. We've witnessed the miracle of new life, the birth of a church. Listen to me. I agree with this straight path. I have put all my trust in Jesus and His death for me. I look at it like this. If someone buys a shirt for me, I mean pays the whole price and then gives it to me, then all I need to do is put it on and wear it. Is that right? Is there anything else I have to do but just believe Jesus, that he took all my sins away and now I'm free? No. There is nothing left to do. It is finished. It is the truth. There is nothing I can do to please God, to pay my sin debt. It became clear to me that this is why Jesus had to die. He took my punishment. I will not come under God's judgment again. When it comes to the things of this world, I don't have a thing. Possessions, you know, I just don't want them. The Lord Jesus has already given me eternal riches. Do you see these ruined hands? Now I'm not concerned with this body of mine, not like I used to be. Do you hear what I'm saying? God has healed me. He's healed me inside. If I die tonight, you can bury this old body in the earth, but my soul will go to God's dwelling place. Now, if the Lord sees this leprosy of mine and says, what a pity, you are my child, but even though you're hurting, I won't take you yet. I'll still be thankful. I'll say, Lord, you're my maker. I'm just waiting on you. My hope is in God. He has given me life. For a long time, we had looked for power so we would not die. That way of living bound us. We did not find life. Our ancestors were deceived, greatly deceived in this. We lived on this island like people in a black room. There was not one light to be found. We sat alone in the darkness, and then you came. We said, those two have a light. And so my heart pulled me. I wanted to hurry and hear the story. I wanted it. I cried for this story like a child cries for food. I listened and said, now I know. Oh, the wall of death, the wall that stands between us and God. Jesus has torn down. When I think back on our old ways, I repent. I regret what we did because we worshipped vain things. Then I had no way out, but now I'm on the path. Now dying doesn't frighten me because I finally understand why we live and why we die. I know now because of these words you brought. Otherwise, there's no way I would have known about living dying, or this journey we are on. You brought the words, and the words gave us life. 